Hello friends, this video on classification of elements part 25 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 24. Let's discuss some merits of quantum periodic table. The first thing is based on atomic number rather than atomic mass which mainly was based on. It explains reasons for the periodicity of the element. There are no anomalies found in the arrangements. Newly discovered elements can easily be accommodated. It helps understand why the elements are in a particular group and they have same properties. It is based on electronic configuration. It made the life of chemistry students and chemists easy. It's easy to remember the properties based on the position of uh, element in the periodic table. Lanthanides and actinides are a little difficult are totally placed separately. But there are some defects also. One is the position of hydrogen is not settled. The second is the lanthanides and axonides are not occurring in the main periodic table. And the third thing I think is the helium guy. Helium guy is in uh, P block. But according to electronic configuration, it has to be in S block, right? So so there's an anomaly they have done helium should be in s block but they have been in p block because helium has characteristics similar to p block so if the element on the left combines with the element of the right they form ionic bond why because element on the left they want to lose electron and element on the right they want to gain electron so one wants to give electron one, one will take electrons, the electron transfer will take place and they'll form ionic bond. If the element on the right side combines with the element on the right side, they find common bond because, for example, in, in this case, both want to give electron. So if both want to give electron, nobody will take. So they'll come up with a conclusion that, okay, let's share it. Right? Element on left doesn't combine with element on left. Sorry, I made a mistake here. Element on right combines with element on right. Both want to take electron. So if both want to take electron, nobody is to ready to take, uh, nobody to give. So they come with a model of sharing. They say, okay, let's share. For example, I'll take an example of CH4. Carbon wants electron, hydrogen wants electron. Both want electron. Nobody is willing to give electron. So they say, okay, we'll share electron. Right, but in this case, on the left hand side, everybody want to give. I want to give, you want to give, both want to give. So in that case, sharing is also not possible, and we can't dump the electron. So in that case, they don't combine. Correct. So you hope you understand the point. See, there are two people now. Okay, so one guy is from the left world, other guy is from the right world. This guy has one extra rupee this lady has one less rupee right she wants one rupee this guy is one extra rupee so they will say okay i will transfer my one rupee to you both are happy so this guy has zero this guy has zero different right both are happy both are stable now questions come so i in this case i want this lady wants say i want one rupee this person say i want one rupee both are saying both want one rupee so what they can do? They'll share. Right? They say that my I have some extra rupee. You will if somebody asks that how much rupee you have, say let's suppose this guy has seven rupees, this guy has seven rupees, and both needs eight rupee to uh, attain the noble configuration. So this guy will say, if somebody asks you say and tell you how much rupee you have. You say I have eight rupee. At that time, I will give you one rupee from myself. But if some if somebody comes and asks me how much rupee I have, I will say I also have eight rupees. But that time, I will take one rupee from you. So there is one rupee that is common to both, right? So that's how the concept of sharing comes, where both feel that both eight eight rupee, but they have seven rupee actually. But they have a mutual agreement and they share. But now in this case, let's suppose there are two person. This guy has nine. This guy has nine rupee. For stability, they want eight. 
8 rupee this guy is not ready to take this guy is not ready nobody is ready to take and they can't share also they have to throw one electron here this guy also throw, have to throw one electron but where will electron go electron you can't throw it like this right so you can't throw money like this because money is precious so in that case they won't form a bond in this case they'll form a bond they'll have a relation where one guy will give to one person in this case they also form a bond where they'll assume that both have a to piece right in this case the bond is not possible so that's why if you see the element on left can combine with the element on right they form ionic bond total transfer of electron in the right side both want electrons so they can share in the left side both want to give electrons so the pairing is not possible okay let's fix in question time so the first question is what is the basic theme of organization of periodic table so the first thing i think is as i told that periodic table is nothing but different class you create different class you put class 1 students in one go class 2 in one class 3 in one class 4 in one group so that you can uh, understand or un the property of the students easily or remember the property of the students easily then and uh, then remembering the properties of all the students right so this is nothing but elements of same property are placed in series this is the main fundamental behind periodic table and also is since it is periodic so there is a pattern in property of element so it is good to read the or understand the pattern in properties of the element which important property did, did mendely we use to classify elements in this periodic table and did he stick to that so if you see mendely views atomic mass that time atomic number was not there atomic mass or you can say atomic weight because that time atomic number was not there right but did he stick to it no so in some case see the main reason i told was to group elements with similar property right that was the main intention for any periodic table similar property so since with atomic mass he was not able to fit so he did some swap for example iodine has atomic mass less than helium but this guy was in group 7 this group 6 even the atomic mass was less right why because iodine was property was similar to chlorine bromine etc so so just to match the same group he swap because actually atomic mass was not the correct uh, as a parameter to group the elements but still in most of the case it worked for him so what is the basic difference in the mendeleev periodic law and the modern periodic law so mendeleev periodic table law was based on atomic mass because that time uh, this atomic mass used to come from stoichiometry by pre that time the protons electrons neutrons were not discovered they didn't know what is atomic number but the modern periodic table is based on atomic number because by this time the proton electrons neutrons were discovered and they knew what atomic number is so the law is same both says that physical and chemical properties of elements are periodic function of so in case of mendeleev law he told atomic mass and for modern periodic law it says atomic number that's all everything is same but instead of atomic mass they use atomic number.
on the basis of quantum number justify the uh, the sixth period has 32 elements so if you see this is the order of the energy for the subshells six period starts from one dun dun where is the six 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 no six six period starts from here six period starts so where the seventh period starts let's see where the seven 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 here seventh period starts here the seventh period starts here six periods end here six period ends here correct so this is the group i have to take so i have to consider 6s 4f 5d 6p subsets only 6d can have s can have how many electrons 2 4f has 7 orbitals so 14 electrons 5d has 5 orbitals so 10 electrons 6p has 3 electron 3 orbitals 6 electrons so if you add these this becomes 32 right so i can see that there are 32 elements in 6 period correct the 6 period start from here 6 periods end here so between these whatever elements i get is nothing but elements that belong to 6 period thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.